I'm looking for a soda to replace Diet Coke in my life. This is your opportunity, sodas of the world. Impress me. I am here to be impressed. Wow. Will you rise to the occasion, though? We'll see. internet welcome to food theory where today it's like oh, it's my dream episode if there is anything that you know about me and the theorist channels on youtube it's probably the fact that we created the sansa's nest meme unfortunately if you, there's two things that you know about us on the channel uh it is that i'm the guy on youtube who wears that red coat more often yeah than that, that red jacket does appear a lot it does you gotta, there, you gotta there's also brand. five nights at freddy's oh it's the five nights at that. freddy's guy that's true uh yeah. but if there's like another other another, thing another thing that you know it's that matthew loves and I, when i say love i mean like kind of borderline stocks diet coke So to Matthew's credit, he gave up Diet Coke for all of 2020, which we did not know would be <laughs> what a year to give it up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and so 2021, I'm coming back with a vengeance. Back. <laughs> Hardcore. We don't advocate drinking a lot of Diet Coke, actually. It's a little unhealthy. Uh, I drink a lot of Diet Coke. I don't advocate it, but I drink a lot of it. So do as I say it, not as I do, friends. Today, we're going to test all of the Diet Colas to see if Matthew should really be hopping back on the Diet Coke bandwagon or if his allegiance has been misplaced all these years. Yeah, have I been loyal to the wrong diet soda? As someone who prides himself on being a diet soda aficionado, I should know that my allegiance is with the best possible option. So today, we have assembled a huge variety of different cola flavors. And in honor of March Madness, we are putting them all into a competition head to head bracket style. For any of you unfamiliar with March Madness, it's a huge month long college basketball tournament here in the States. And it's going on right now as we speak. 64 teams get invited. 68 if you count the playing games and they all duke it out single elimination style until one team is crowned the national champion and today food theory is going to be using a similar approach to determine the champion of matt pat's taste buds i asked my wife steph to join me in the taste test today to act as a control i can pretty much pick the taste of diet coke out of a crowd at this point but steph doesn't drink nearly as much diet soda as i do so she's here to hold my feet to the fire and make sure that i'm staying as objective as possible now in order to enter today's march madness tournament get it? I changed madness to madness. Ah, oh, look at that pro writing right there. A soda has to meet three criteria. First, it has to be cola flavored. Sorry to all the root beers and Dr. Peppers of the world, but this episode ain't about you. Same goes for colas that have flavoring added, like cherry or lime. Today, we're strictly looking at sodas with the cola flavor first. No twists. Secondly, today's cola contenders must have zero calories. Diet Coke has zero calories, so any soda looking to replace it in my life needs to bring zero to the table as well. I'm sorry, Coca-Cola light. You and your 15 calories like pick a lane and stick with it. None of this middle-of-the-road business Finally, I'll only be looking at zero calorie colas that are readily available for me here in North Carolina If you don't see your favorite diet cola in today's tournament, it's because it wasn't for sale near my home I get that a lot of great options probably maybe got left out of the tournament And please let me know if we've missed any in the comments below But if a soft drink is actually gonna supplant diet coke in my day-to-day -day life Well, I gotta be able to actually drink it on a regular basis with all that being said Let's get pouring, friends. Over the teeth, over the gums. Look out, Matt Pat. Here it comes. Let's pour! Pour! Not so fast, me. In true March Madness form, we can't really start the tournament until we have ourselves a play-in game. So, before we get into the main competition here, we first have to have a runoff of Diet Coke. You see, there are lots of different sources of Diet Coke, and you ask anyone who is as die-hard of a Diet Coke aficionado as I am, they'll tell you that different sources taste differently. For instance, soda fountain Diet Coke, there's also plastic bottle Diet Coke, canned Diet Coke, so we have them represented here to make sure that the one that enters the competition is putting its best foot forward. And the Diet Coke only gets one entry onto the main bracket. You can't have like half the bracket be Diet Coke. So it gets one shot and we're gonna see which one goes up against all the other soda. Right, so here we go. We have the three laid out here. Straw ready? Straw ready. Doo, 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 doo. Let the Diet Coke off begin. These have been poured without me seeing them, but I can tell you that is the can. 100%. Yeah, that's the can. Right? It's weird. Because it's the same thing, but you can tell they're different. Hey, it might be the bottle. That might be the bottle, because it wasn't. Nope, that's the bottle. Well, we'll see. 
We'll see. This is weird. They are very distinct across the board. Oh yeah, that's weird. This one is slightly sweeter. Mm -hmm. This one has an imaginary plastic taste that I think I'm making up, but maybe not. And then this one is like the other one. Which one goes into the bracket then? I think it's I think it's this one. It's a better flavor. Right? I'm okay with that. I think we I think this is the entry. Okay, so okay. should we check? Yeah. Let's check them. This is the can. Oh, this is fountain. That's fountain. And this Man. is the bottle. You're good. <laughs> Told you. I'm very serious about this one. So with that being said, fountain. Diet Coke moves into the main bracket, and now the competition actually begins. Get these out of here. Get these garbage Diet Cokes out of here. <laughs> so at long last, we finally had our bracket for the first round of March Madness. We decided to generally give the top seeds to the big top selling brands, with mid-level seeds going to the medium-sized brands and indie bottlers, and the lowest seeds going to white label grocery brands, which meant that our first first round matchup was between the top seeded juggernaut of the competition, Fountain Diet Coke, and bottom seeded Publix Diet Cola. So for those of you who don't know, Publix is a regional grocery store specializing in like the southeast of the U.S. Yeah, in Florida. In Florida is part of the southeast of the U.S. Staff. Every grocery store seems to have their own brand of diet soda. In order to fill out 16 slots on the bracket, we needed to dip into a lot of those. We so dug deep, guys. So there we go. Will this be a March Madness style upset? Let's see. Alas, it wasn't an upset. While we technically didn't know the identities of the two soda samples, it was pretty obvious to us which cup contained the number one selling diet soda in the world. I think the winner here clearly is the Diet Coke. Yeah, the Publix brand, definitely much more sweet, mm. which is good and has a solid soda flavor, but I think the balance of sweetness to like acidity and carbonation just works better with the Diet Coke here. Yeah. Or number two, I don't know if it's Diet Coke, but I think number two is the winner. It is number Who's two the the Diet Coke. Yeah. It is. Ding. Round number one goes to Diet Coke. Next up was eighth seeded Soda Stream Diet Cola versus seventh seeded Boylan Diet Cane Cola. Boylan is a small bottling company that started making birch beer in New Jersey back in the 1890s. We found it for sale at one of the soda specialty shops near our house. And it's arguably the most old school bottler in today's tournament. While it's true that Coca-Cola is the original cola, Boylan has stayed true to their original recipes and methods for over a hundred years. Whereas the big boys started to take on things like corn syrup and plastic bottles along the way. Soda Stream isn't really a soda as much as it is a machine, a system that allows you to make your own soda from home. Now, one of these two Diet Colas really stood out to us, and not in a good way. Oh! This one. No, this one. Really? This one. It's cough syrup. Oh God. Oh. It's so bad. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> Why is that so bad? It even smells like cough syrup. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, what is this? It's very strong. Wow. It, but it does have, like again, if you're going to cola for that medicinal flavor, whatever two is, is oh, it's intense. It's like turpentine. <laughs> terrible. I do feel like the paint has been stripped off the roof of my mouth. I know. And yes, that means I've been eating paint chips all these years. We assumed cup number two was the soda stream and that we had somehow miscalibrated the machine or something, but we were certainly wrong. Number one is soda stream. <gasps> no way! <gasps> really? Wow. Maybe Boylan's makes lots of other sodas. I'm sure their other sodas might be totally lovely. This is not it. Just oh. coat your tongue God. and it stays on it. It smells so bad. In all honesty, we weren't really huge fans of the Soda Streams Diet Cola either, but got past this round. To be fair, Boylan was very upfront about the fact that their soda pops are unique. Bold and quote, are best savored, not slugged down. Their original non-diet pure cane cola is one I'd definitely be curious to try out. I imagine it'd be a bit like stepping back in time. With our first minor upset in the books, it was time for our seventh seeded caffeine-free diet Pepsi to face off against against 11 seed Zevia Cola, which is a zero calorie soda that uses the plant-based and supposedly healthier sweetener Stevia. Unlike the other colas in the tournament, Zevia is clear colored, so we had a pretty good idea which cup it was in. Still, we did our best to stay impartial. Wow, <laughs> unless we got Crystal Pepsi from back in the 80s, something tells me that uh, this one might be the caffeine-free diet Pepsi, but. You know, I'm gonna try to judge as neutrally as possible here. Ultimately, Steph and I determined that we just don't really like Stevia as a soda sweetener. The Stevia really overpowered the cola flavors with its sweetness, and it lingered on our tongues for a long time too. I'm actually not a big fan, and for me, I actually love the idea of Stevia. I wish I liked Stevia. I like want that one to win, but 
for me, it's too sweet. Unfortunately, Zevia, you were good, but not enough to beat the heavy hitter that is Diet Pepsi. Yeah. Our next matchup was Diet Right Cola against Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is a battle of old versus new. Diet Right, the first Diet Cola ever, has been around since 1958. Meanwhile, Pepsi Zero Sugar didn't hit the scene until the 21st century. I gotta say, this one was close. Both Steph and I had difficulty telling them apart because they tasted so similarly. In the end, Pepsi Zero Sugar eked out the win, but let it be known to all you Pepsi Zero drinkers out there, if you're looking to ditch the sweetener aspartame, which is an artificial sweetener that you're really not allowed to use in a worryingly large number of countries out there in the world, you might want to try Diet Right, which uses Splenda brand sucralose instead, supposedly a healthier alternative. Next up, Diet Shasta Cola versus Coke Zero. Technically, it's now Coca-Cola Zero Sugar because they tweaked the recipe a few years back, but let's get real. No one's ever going to call it that. It's not happening, Coke, and I'm not going to pretend like it's happening. Shasta is a soft drink manufacturer here in the States that offers, as they put it, quote, a value-priced soft drink line. For me, I always knew it as the soda of choice for post-game t-ball snacks because they came in squatty kid-sized cans. Probably a bad omen for old Shasta that I remember the cans more than the soda itself. Who knows? Maybe they've changed their recipe since the 90s, but as a lowly 13th seed, Diet Shasta Cola has its work cut out for it against the three seed of Coke Zero. Ooh, that's good. That's very pleasant. I like it. It's Mine not was not. Really? <laughs> no. Mine was really chemically. Mine was not a winner. Yeah, one takes it. Probably Coke Zero. Yeah. This is, uh, let me explain what this flavor is. Not good. <laughs> That's the flavor of that one. It does have an, a really synthetic aftertaste that just doesn't work. Number one is the winner. What was number one? Coke Zero. Coke Zero. Coke Zero, okay. Go figure. Sorry, Shasta. Shasta got the shaft. Shasta, Shasta. got the shaft in. <laughs> Shafts up. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. After that, we had a matchup between two grocery store brands, Walmart's Diet Sam's Cola versus Whole Foods 365 Zero Calorie Cola. Let's see how it is. 365, will I be drinking this 365 days a year? Oh, I hate this. Whatever this is, this is miserable. Oh. This is okay. Oh. Oh, this is so awful. Hmm. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Wow. Oh, I hate it with a fiery passion. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's weird. It is so oh. bizarre, no. right? <laughs> it is wacky. When you first take a sip, there's nothing wrong with it, except it's like, oh, this is like a little sweeter than it should be. And then it just has this lingering, awful sweetness on the back. Oh, Meh. what is the one that I hate, Matt? Uh, Whole Foods. This is, <laughs> <laughs> I hate Whole is Foods. This, wait, 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 is this flavored with stevia? Wait. It's flavored with stevia, that's why we hate it. Really, this is I stevia? I just don't like, Stuff flavored with stevia, I can't get over it. Diet Sam's Cola moved on to the second round, and we moved on to our next first round matchup. The Diet Cola from North Carolina-based grocery store Harris Teeter versus the specialty soda Johnny Ryan Diet Cola. Like Boylan, Johnny Ryan is another old school bottler that's stuck with glass bottles and cane sugar in its non-diet sodas. Harris Teeter, meanwhile, is literally the closest grocery store to our house. I knew absolutely nothing about their Diet Cola going into this tournament, other than the fact that we needed a 16th Diet Cola and it had to be there on the shelf when we needed it most, i.e. the morning of the shoot when we were one short. Ooh. Ooh, this is very good. This is weird. <laughs> no. I can't decide if I like it or not. This is this is nice. I like this because um, the flavor of whatever one is, it has that like signature diet soda flavor, but there's a little bit like a fruitiness on the back end. I like one a lot. This one actually, Ooh, this right? Ooh, nice. It's really good. There's an almost citrus cherry kind of kick in there, but it's it's still strongly cola, so it's only just a little hint. It's really nice. It just kind of rounds out the flavor a little bit more. That one has some kind oh. of taste in there too that's not, it's, it's kind of weird. I don't know. I was like, I, I can't decide if I really enjoy that. Nope. Yeah. So I would say number one takes the round. Mm. Matt, what's number one? Hands down. Harris Teeter. <gasps> no Harris Teeter? Way. No way. Aww. No way. I'm so sorry, Johnny Ryan. I was rooting for that one. I thought for one. sure that this was going to be the Johnny Ryan. Because I'm like, oh, this is this is the sort of flavor that you can only get out of like a specialty handcrafted thing. I know. Wow. Oh, man. This huh. is great. Oh, well, man. We might have ourselves 
the shocker upset favorite here. And yet another shocking upset came right on its heels when another North Carolina-based grocery chain, Food Lion, narrowly edged out Diet Pepsi with its Diet Cola. You heard that right. The North Carolina-based supermarket Food Lion, which you've probably never heard of, has a Diet Cola that was capable of edging out the Diet Pepsi in our very highly scientific uh, test that we're running here today. I was shocked. Well done, North Carolina. Way to represent. So it was a strong finish in the first round for our regional grocery chains, with Food Lion and Harris Teeter both pulling out surprise victories. But plenty of big names still made it through as well. Coke and Pepsi each sent two products to the second round, and with Soda Stream and Diet Sam's Cola also in the mix, it was anybody's guess as to who would be named Top Pop. What do you call it, Steph? I'm a soda. Soda versus you, you pop. You grew up as pop. I grew up as a pop man. Up in the Midwest, we call it pop. Well, here in the South, it's all universally Coke. So you'd go into a restaurant and they'd be like, what kind of Coke do you want? And you'd be like, I want Dr. Pepper. <laughs> you guys down here in the South are just chaotic. Yeah, let us know what you are. Are you pop, soda, Coke? or something else. Or other. In the second round, both Coke products walked through easy wins. Coke Zero was decidedly tastier than Diet Sam's Club, and Diet Coke was a slam dunk against SodaStream, no questions asked. The matchup between Diet Pepsi Caffeine Free, or as a normal human would call it, Caffeine Free Diet Pepsi, and Pepsi Zero was close, but in the end, Steph and I chose Diet Pepsi Caffeine Free as the winner. But the second round matchup that really delivered was the Battle of the South, Harris Teeter Diet Cola versus Food Lion Diet Cola. Mm, this is is really good. So is this one. These are really good. Both of these, I wish both of these could go through because mm. I think that both would have a chance at taking out some of the heavier hitters. I am shocked by the strength of the store brands of some of these southern grocery stores. Yeah, they're really good. And I'm sure that these are also like extremely similar, if not exactly the same as other regional grocery stores. So I guess the lesson, just based on how far these both have made it through the brackets, is like don't be put off by the store brand. Like wow. they are really good sometimes. They're, you just have to try it. Right, you just have to give it a try. The generic, the store brand, whatever. So good. Totally legit. Uh, I am shocked because one has this very unique, again, it has that weird, interesting fruity blend that none of the other ones have. It has a really great flavor to it. You said number one is your favorite? One is the favorite. Uh, Harris Teeter. This is Harris Teeter. Yeah, and you said it's because it's fruity? Yeah. I don't know if this is gonna spoil things for you, yeah. so I can hold it, but there's a difference in ingredients between the two. Oh, really? What, what is- one have citric acid? Yeah. Really, yeah. it's the citric acid. Mm -hmm. So, huh, so this is the, this is Harris Teeter. So Harris Teeter moves on. You know it's the same difference that we found between Fruit Loops and Apple Jacks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Citric acid. Makes really, such a big difference Really apparently. makes a huge, it's also the thing that made a huge difference with the KFC episode. Citric acid just runs our world. We don't even know it. Citric acid is like the magic ingredient in all of these recipes. This is really good, guys. I'm really excited about this. Yeah. This, could, this could take it. And with that, our final four was set. First up was Diet Coke versus Caffeine Free Diet Pepsi. As soon as the two samples touched my lips, I could tell which was which. I also knew I preferred Diet Coke, but I kept that to myself and sat back and let Steph decide her favorite between the two, just to make sure I wasn't bringing my own bias to the table. Okay, then I'll go first. I, pre I prefer number one. Diet Coke wins wow. it. Oh, wow. Oh man, moving oh, on to no. the finals. The other final four matchup was our Cinderella story. 13 seed Harris Teeter Diet Cola versus third seeded perennial powerhouse Coke Zero. And unlike the previous round, Steph and I didn't see eye to eye. I definitely preferred cup number one and she definitely preferred cup number two. Eventually we decided to rock, paper, scissors for it. Ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh no! <laughs> we didn't find this out until later, but cup number one was Harris Teeter and number two was Coke Zero. So weirdly enough, I wasn't even fighting for a Coke product here. Just wanted to mention that because I'm a little proud of myself for staying objective. <laughs> Neither of us are budging. Here, let me, let me convince you. Here, sample it one more time, Stephanie. Nope, I've made my choice. <laughs> <laughs> 
After six consecutive rock, paper, scissor ties, we took it as a sign from the universe and opted to have a three-way championship round. Diet Coke versus Harris Teeter Diet Cola, the underdog, versus Coke Zero. To be honest, at this point late in the day, we'd tested these finalist colas so many times, their identities were pretty obvious to us as soon as they hit our tongues. One. Very mild. Yeah. Good. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's Diet Coke. It's fine. It's, it's Diet Coke. You can tell. I know. It's that fountain Diet Coke. Two. Harris Teeter. It's got that that fruitiness on the bottom. It does, you know? It That's does. It's nice. It's real That's nice. It's nice. kind of like it. It's real good. Three. For whatever reason, this the, the Coke mm. Zero, which usually reads as a really sugary to me, is less sugary this time. Mm. I yeah. stand by my Coke, Coke Zero. Zero. Oh. Number three. Bloke Coke. Give it to me. So Steph, you're going with number three? Number three. Number three is my number three place. Two is the best. In my Diet Coke addled brain, it has the most interesting flavor while still maintaining the diet cola thing that I just live for. It's it's that fruitiness that's in it. It's that added little like bump at the back end of it that's really delicious and is so unique and interesting and not chemically flat. It doesn't taste too chemically, it doesn't taste too sweet. It is without question. My, I, and I and I it blows my mind. It, I, I, Are you hearing this? No joke, and this is totally behind the scenes, just to give you guys an idea of where this, this was not on the list as of this morning. This was supposed to be Diet Coke Splenda, but they didn't sell it in any stores even remotely near us. I went out to the local Harris Teeter, and this was the one thing that they had, and I'm like, we need one filler slot here, let me grab it. And it has shockingly, bested everyone in this competition. I can't believe, I don't even, I don't even have a joke for that. Like, I can't, I can't believe that. That is not for the memes, that's not for the views, that's not clickbait. Like, I, I am as shocked as you are. This is my favorite diet soda. What? What? Now, I realize the result isn't exactly helpful to a lot of you theorists out there. After all, Harris Teeter is a small regional grocery chain, and if you don't live along the U.S. Eastern Seaboard, it's gonna be tough to get. So, we did some digging into Harris Teeter brand soda, and here's the skinny. Being a relatively small chain, Harris Teeter doesn't have their own food processing or manufacturing. Instead, they do what a lot of grocery stores do and slap their logo on white label products, or, as grocery stores prefer to call them, private label products. This probably merits its own food theory episode in the future, but Basically, there are factories that quietly produce similar or even identical food products for multiple brands. So the store brand spaghetti at one grocery store might be exactly the same and come from the same factory as the store brand spaghetti sold at the competitor's store. Heck, the more expensive brand name spaghetti might actually be from the same factory too. And the same goes for sodas. Now, in 2013, Harris Teeter merged with and became a subsidiary of the much larger retail company Kroger. While Harris Teeter is too small to manufacture their own food products, Products, Kroger operates, quote, 35 food processing or manufacturing facilities. So here's some homework for all the theorists out there looking to find the best diet cola in their area. Check out white label sodas from these Kroger owned stores listed on their website. I can't prove it without taking a sizable road trip, but I have a sneaking suspicion that some of these stores like Kroger's, Fred Meyer's, Ralph's, Fry's, and Food for Less might actually be selling the exact same white label soda as Harris Teeter, but with a different label on it. Be sure to let me know down in the comments. I am really curious to know if Kroger is secretly supplying us all with the most delicious diet cola the world has ever tasted. So there you have it, theorists. I set out today looking to get the truth, and I think I found it. Look, there's always going to be a special place in my heart for Diet Coke, and let's not overlook the fact that it had a strong showing today. It was both my and Steph's second place choice, but if and when I get back on the soda bandwagon, I'll be stocking up on the tastier and considerably cheaper, I might add, Harris Teeter Diet Cola. Though I gotta say, after the amount of soda we ingested today. Might be a while before Steph or I ever pick up a soda again. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.
Thanks for watching, theorists. I just ingested twice my body weight in soda for your entertainment. How about a click of that subscribe button in return? Steph and I are always running new food experiments here on the Food Theory channel. Some of them are actually useful, and others are... Well, th th sometimes they're just for fun. Like last week's episode on Panera Bread Bowl gloves. Yep, you heard that right. They're gloves made of bread. I'm not gonna say that we regret making the episode, but you'll probably regret if you don't watch it. That link's on screen right now. And I'll see you all next week.